Yeah, Genesis, uh, uh, last week uh, we ended at uh, Genesis chapter 7 and now Genesis chapter 8. So now when there was going on, all that, um, the water started coming, the rain continuously, it rained for 40 days and nights. And so God remembered, God remembered Noah. And then God wanted to save Noah. And you know how many ways the water was coming upon the earth is? It's from the sky, up from the sky, floodgates. The Bible says the floodgates opened from the sky. Today we pray, you know, our oh Lord open the floodgates and, uh, and let the people come like a water flow. Actually, at that, that time, Noah time, the water just not from the rain that um, drowned the whole uh, world, actually. Extra water came from the sky. The floodgates were opened. That's what it says. And then from the deep, from the deep of the sea, you know, from the oceans, from the deep also, it's open. The water came from the deep also. And Plus rain, 40 days and nights. So that's why the whole world actually drowned in the water. That much water. The water level was so high, even the mountains, they could not even see the mountains are also drowned. Okay. So um, then God remembered Noah and the, uh, and the family and so then what he did is the rain stopped and God closed the floodgates there and God even shut this deep from the deep, the water flow. And God sent wind and wind started drying up, you know, all the water. And it took like a, a five months and the 150 days it says, it means it's five months. So at the end of the 150 days, you know, they could see that the water started decreasing. The water level started decreasing. And then at the 10th month, 10th month actually, um, he could see um, uh, the, this arc was uh, reached the, some mountain there. They, they could see a little bit of the top of the mountain started visible. And then what he did is uh, uh, he opened the window and he sent out ravens, you know, uh, but uh, they were looking and uh, for a place to uh, 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 like a rest, but uh, they were not coming backward. They were just going roaming here and there. These ravens never came back, but what he did is he sent dough afterwards. And dough that if they don't find any resting place, they come back from where it was sent. So that's why he sent dough, black colored dough. And then it went and it came back again. So it means he could not find any place to rest. So he could, came back. And then he waited. Seven more days he waited. And then afterwards, he sent that uh, dog again out. And then this time it went and it brought a little uh, like a leaf, olive, freshly, fresh olive leaves in his beak. So he knew that, okay, the water started drying up. I think the trees, I think maybe the, just the tip of the trees may be visible. That's why it got only a, a leaves. And then, so it kept for seven more days he waited and then after seven more days again sent dog this time it never came back so it means so water dried up over the land also over the earth then that time god also spoke to him then open the door and come out you know so he opened the door he came out so he just imagine only his family on the whole face of the earth only Noah's family is there on the earth. 
it's just like in the beginning like adam and eve like that again only noah's family this time then god said to them you know now you multiply be fruitful and occupy the whole land okay and then um noah noah wife and had three sons and shem japheth and the third one ham you know three sons yeah, remember the names so three sons and wives were there so they uh and noah was doing the farming at the time and then uh, he planted the um, uh, wine and he was taking care of that and he got a wine out of it you know um and then he drank he was fully drunk and he did not know like he was even naked he just laid naked in the in his tent and you know the story there um uh before this before going into the story i forgot to tell you god actually you know after all this flood and everything happened god actually thought he he, he felt very sorry about it like a, you know for what happened and how whole earth been destroyed all that so god wanted to make a covenant with noah to saying that you know never again i'll destroy this earth again never again you know because this time whole mankind was just killed right was destroyed so he wanted to make a covenant with noah never again i bring water like this and destroy the whole earth so um as a sign of the covenant he made that rainbow rainbow to appear on the sky that's why even till today if any clouds were there even the rain start that comes the rainbow comes so that it's to remind him uh, between even man and god that covenant what we had with god you know we can remember that okay god is not going to destroy even the rain is coming it's not going to be like that day of noah you know so it will like that to remember this covenant god is not going to destroy the whole earth with floods okay yeah. so um okay i'll come back to this story now so then he was just he laid in the tent naked and then uh, first that sun comes and sees uh, ham comes and uh, he saw that and he um uh, he lucky he went out and he told uh, two other brothers uh, shem and japheth and shem and japheth what they did is like you know uh, they felt very um ayo like a father is like a his dignity right is they don't want his reputation to go ruined and so what they did it they want to cover him because they don't want anybody to know about it to see that and they want to cover him so they they don't even want to see that right that's why they were they took cloth and they started walking backwards and covered so then noah came to senses and he came to know what all happened and he was very upset with that son ham he was very upset because he was feeling very ashamed about it and that son you know like uh, he exposed him to other brothers you know he should not have exposed it he should feel bad about it he should do something he should have done something but you know instead of that he went out and told other brothers also that he felt very ashamed about it and he ruined his reputation no so that's why he was very upset very angry about that and then he um cursed that man ha uh, saying that you know um is like a, his son's name one of the son name is canan so maybe why the lands got that names they named after the people i think so maybe canan spread over that place that land i think that's why maybe that land got that name can canan and this but even in the curse he says that you know that canan becomes 
like son of Ham, right? Son of Ham. Ham got actually three sons' names. One of the sons' names is Canaan. And so Canaan becomes a servant of Shade and Japheth. That's what the curse is about, you know? So it means you are going to serve your brothers. You are like a servant to them. Yeah. So whatever you have, the land, the canon, it becomes servant. So the, your sons, they're going to become servant to um, shame and Japheth. So, but God, um, Noah blesses these other two sons and saying that, you know, you're going to expand. You're going to increase. Your, your territory is going to be expanded. It means... You're going to possess a lot of land and you're going to possess Canaan like that. So all the blessings he gives to them. So I just want you to know that, you know, um, these things happen um, because later on, when you, when you study why God wanted those Canaanites to be destroyed completely, you will come to know. That's why this is very important. Why? Because it was cursed by Noah already but Noah already spoken that word that becomes servant to Shem and Japheth because in the Shem's uh, generations Abraham comes in the shame okay so that's why I want you, you to know these uh, details now okay afterwards what happened so um, they all that started increasing in number and then they thought that okay let us all build a city for all of us to live here and they started building a city and building a big tower. That tower only called Babel Tower. They started building a big tower. They all wanted to live in that city. They all wanted to live in that tower. But whereas God said to Noah, you spread over the land. Go and possess. Go spread over the land. Increase in number. Spread. But then doing opposite they're not instead of spreading they all want to stay in one place and started building a big tower and that's when god saw that you know these people are all in one heart you know if they are in one heart doing something they can achieve it so there is something you need to know that if there is unity even god only thought that if they are in unity and building something, they're going to be, become successful in it. So that's what God thought. Let's go now only. Stop the work. Because they are going to achieve it. They are going to make a big tower. That, that's what they wanted. Is like as big as it want, they want that to touch the sky. That much big they want to build. So all the... There was a brick there. There was cement there. It was all available. No, it was all in natural products. God only created all these things. So it's everything available. They were building with all that. And so, but God thought, you know, let's go and confuse their language. So that if this is something, you know, when, if we have same language and say, like, because they're all same family, you know, they're all same family. They all decided to stay in one place. So because when God confused their language and they could not stay in one place anymore. So they started dividing now. They started like all people who speak the same language, they went and occupied certain land. Like that, according to the languages, they were all divided. You know, so in that way, they started occupying occupying the most of the land. Okay, now I come back to this story about uh, family genealogy of uh, Noah's descendants, Noah's son's genealogy, okay? Let's go to that. And there's something interesting we find in this genealogy um, is that about Shem, Japheth, and uh, uh, this one, Ham, okay? So in um, Shem... Okay, family, I will tell you later. And Japheth also, their, their descendants also. We don't much hear about their descendants. Much, not much mentioned in the Bible about who, who are those nations. But whereas uh, this Ham, 
Ham uh, generations are mentioned here. He had three sons. One is Kush, another one is Mizra, Mizraim, and Put and Cana. Okay, so um, something about Kush. Kush's son name is Nimrod. Nimrod. You might have heard about this name, Nimrod. He is a very powerful hunter that time. So, and he's a mighty man, powerful, a very strong, mighty one on the earth that time, you know, mighty hunter. And then he's, a, he, he's built many cities that time. You know, one of the famous city we know is Nineveh. The city of Nineveh was built by Nimrod. Okay. And then um, another um, <coughs> Uh, yeah. And the another son, Miz Mizram, I said. No? So Mizram, from the Mizram family, Philistines will come. One of the son uh, uh, genealogy is that Philistines. They came from that one son. Of, okay. And it, these, so you remember, Mizram family, Philistines will come. From Kush, Nimrod there, and from um, Canaan. So from Canaan, he has several sons. So their sons' names are um, Amorite, Jebusite, no, um, Hivite, Sidonite, all this. You know that uh, these ites, right? So they all came from. Um, Canaan. So all together we call Canaanites. Okay. So now their, their territory extended from Sidon and to up to Sodom, Gomorrah, up to that land, their territory extended. Okay. So now um, you know that now. So why God told you know them to destroy all the Canaanites. So remember one thing. This time also, Nephilim were there. Nephilim were existing. Like Nephilim means, as I said already, they were fallen angels, possessed men. And they were possessed with these demons. And, and they married women and gave birth to children they were born so huge, like they were like giants, big size. So they were there before the flood. Also, after the flood also, same that uh, demons again, same thing. And especially these Canaanites. These Canaanites were so big, you know. So now you understand, they can mess up with the genes also, the demons, right? So that's with the bond with such a huge personalities. Okay. Um, you know, so there's only one remedy is that to destroy them before God destroyed them with the flood. But now God given that command to the Israelites to destroy them, to kill them all. There's the only way to vanish them from the earth is only way to kill them all. That's all. Because that was, there was no revelation about deliverance, demons, people possessed with demons, they needed deliverance. All that can, cannot be done that time. Because Jesus had not come and he has not, you know, uh, brought the victory over the Satan yet. So there was no remedy at that, for that time. So there's only one thing is to destroy. Okay. So, um, then let's see the dissonance of shame now. So shame dissonance, you know, is interesting. So many, but I don't need to go through. You, when you are reading, you can read all those names. But I'll start with here. Um, Tera, you know, on a, in their family line, Tera. Tera is the father of Abraham. 
So Terra got uh, sons, um, Abraham and uh, Nahor. The other one is uh, Haran. So three sons Terra got, okay? So Haran dies very young age, but Haran's son is Lot. And Nahor marries someone and settled there. Uh, but Abraham, no children. Sarah was there, no children. And But Lot father died. So what Sarah does is he took grandson Lot and took Abraham and wife Sarah. And they set out the journey to go to Canaan. God asked them to go to Canaan and occupy because that was the already promise given to Noah. You know, already the Noah pronounced that blessing upon that shame family that they're going to take Canaan. So then they set out that journey to go to Canaan, actually Terra. And then what happened? They reached to Haran name. And after he reached there, I don't know, like he forgot about or uh, he left that vision to go to Canaan and he just settled there. Maybe he found everything, facilities, everything nice, maybe he became comfortable there. They said God settled. Then God has to raise up someone else now because some people like that, they go in their vision halfway and they don't complete the vision and they settle with that. And they become satisfied with that. And some way along the line, they leave the vision. Then God will raise up someone else. So God raised up Abraham now. God spoke into Abraham. Now this time God speaks to Abraham saying that, leave your family. Leave your family, your relatives, and the country. You go there. See, Tara already distracted by the something. And God do not want Abraham to be distracted like that. So God told Abraham to leave everybody and go. Go to Canaan. But he says that very clearly. Relatives, he says, leave your relatives and go. But Abraham took relative Lot with him. You know, maybe Lot wanted to go with him. So anyway, Abraham, for him, he sees a nephew, right? He took Lot with him, he took wife and all they have, the servants and flock, everything that they have, and they start going. Okay. Um, I think I'll stop here because 12th is very important. I want to um, say this next week. Okay. So um, you can read. I only covered important points only. You can also read, you can stop the recording. Stop the recording.